sorry about the wind guys but today I'm serving eviction notice on um, all my dahlias all these dahlias here they're all going in the cold frame at the top of the plot I need to make some room now to get these um, the rest of my spuds in so um, in the next hour or two these are all be out of here and they'll be in my new cold frame so I'll show you that where I want to put them in a bit so let's get on with it eh Right guys, as you can see, um, all my dahlias are now in the cold frame, along with my um, Solomon seal, which is at the end there, it's just starting to come up, and my, um, my lilies, yellow and white lilies are just starting to come up. Uh, we've got mint and parsley there, it's doing okay. We've got some um, raspberry, raspberries coming up. Uh, what else we got? Well, we got, let me count, 18, 20, 23, 23 dahlias there. And I've got a pile more dahlias to go straight in the ground. Um, that was good doing that next week. But I'm going to close that up now. Water them every week, once a week, and uh, they should be fine. I always use the water what's inside the, um, inside the cold frame so I don't shock them. It's a good tip that for anyone. Get a couple of water butts inside your greenhouse so it keeps to the same temperature. That way when you water your plants, you ain't getting a freezing cold water poured on them. Or boiling hot water. Uh, the case may be in reverse, but there you go. These are all, all tucked away now and I've put a load of uh, slug pellets all over these dahlias and the lilies. Cause, uh, and the Solomon seal. Because the slugs absolutely love them. So there we go, these are all sorted. Now I can get on with the next lot of potato um, planting. So let's get back up to the, the other greenhouse and uh, we'll continue doing what I've been promising for weeks. Right guys, what you're looking at there, the my Penton Javelin which are here and my Sal Palmyra which is there. Now you're going to have to excuse the wind. Um, it's uh, pretty bad today. It's the 29th today, by the way. That's just uh, for my um, convenience. I need to know when I put them in, so I know when to take them out. But as you can see, the Penton Javelin's chitted really well here. Some nice chits. However, the um, South Pole Mirror, not so much, but there are chits on them. And they're going in today, anyhow, and they're going into my main greenhouse. So, further ado, Let's go into the main greenhouse and I'll show you um, where they're going and uh, I'll show you what I'm going to be using as um, fertilisers and what have you. Alright guys, what you're seeing there is some grow more, some blood fish and bone. I need um, some potash. I've got to go and get that, I just forgot it. And I've got some microfusal fungi, that's what this stuff is here. It's pretty windy out here. But uh, you can see it root, uh, uh, promotes root growth. So this is going to be cell palmyra and what have you. And I'm going to be topping it with uh, topping it up with that compost. Uh, now as you can see, we've already made a start by filling the bucket so, so full. All I need to do now is add this stuff and the grow more and what have you give them all a good mixing drop the potatoes in which I'm going to show you in a bit uh, I'm going to be putting four to a bucket a bit two right at the bottom and I'm going to be sticking two right at the, uh, halfway up hopefully I'll be getting spuds all the way through the, the bucket rather than just at the bottom of the bucket like I keep getting every bloody year so uh, yeah like everyone's going with this experiment I've already done something very similar in the the other greenhouse but I've done these are my next 10 buckets what I'm going to be doing so I'm going to be doing Penton Javelin and uh, Sal Palmyra and um, and I've got 20 more buckets to do but I'm going to be putting the main crop outside in the the beds outside um, later at the well about three quarters of the way into next month about 20th of April I'll put them in um, but now I'm just going to be sticking uh, this out, the, the, these in here. Um, so hang on a second, I'll show you how I mix all my 
me different things up and uh, we'll take it from there. Fill all them with spuds now. Good God. That should be full. Right guys, we're ready to rock and roll. I hope you're watching this. You need about that much microfusal fungi. In it goes. Right. Get down, down and dirty here. Uh, good handful of uh, this grow more. Good handful, well, a bit more than that I think. Handful of um, blood fish and bone. I've also added already, which I should have told you, um, some potash. Now I'm going to give it a good mixing up. Right, so it's all been mixed up. Hope you're getting that, guys. So the first things first, I'm going to be putting the Sal Palmeira. So we want two decent ones. What we're going to do, go so far down, so the bottom of the bucket or near the bottom of the bucket. Right, and then we're going to go again, two smaller ones sitting just on the top. And then, a bit more, grow more, a bit more potash, and we're going to spread some of this over the top of it, and take them up to about halfway. Or just, just over halfway. doing in a bit I'll be giving them a good water in in most important that label there with the date on Sal Palmeira with the date now guys what I've got to do I've got to go and do another 10 buckets of these so I'll be back when I'm done like I say you don't want to watch me do all the buckets it'd be, be so monotonous and I need a break so I'm going to have a coffee oh I'll tell you what I didn't do Should have done that a bit further down, but uh, yeah, a few slug pellets and we're done. Uh -huh. Right, guys, the cell pull mirrors are all in, and so are the Penton Javelin. Um, I say I can only get 10 buckets in this greenhouse, so these, these went in on the 29th of this month. Um, it's always important to write the date of when you put them in, so when you come to uh in the greenhouse a bit it's blowing the gale out there so you know when to um, crop them I've put them pellets what you see there slug pellets last thing I need slugs going down into the into the soil in the compost in the buckets and um, damaging the potatoes I've just watered these I've got to do all this watering now um, the cabbage these these cabbage are doing all right it's starting to to come good the um, sweet corn's doing really well there. I only put that in the other last week. I think, I think it was last week I did the video, or was it the week before? Anyhow, they've not been in more than 12 days, anyhow. But yeah, they're already like two inches high. Uh, all the tomatoes have started to come up here, and same with the. Um, the cucumbers and there's a cucumber there come up and there's, there's a, a load of chilies started to come up in all these here, started to come through there's a, a Joe Long in there but it's I've got a bit of a problem with it it's it's that top heavy it's it's fallen over and it's dead spingly so I don't know what I'm gonna do with that I don't think that's gonna survive actually but it's 
it's in the pack in the back there. There's there's another five to come up yet, so who knows? And these are only just starting to come now, all these um chilies and what have you. So yeah, it's uh it's doing pretty well, got rid of most of the stuff. Um my banana shallots have started to come up in here. I don't know if you can see the banana shot shallots, it looks like they're all started to come through. Close the lid. And these I only planted last week, so there's got plenty of time for them to, to come good. So that's the the middle greenhouse all taken care of with the spuds. Like I say, four weeks, five weeks time, all these spuds will be out of here and there'll be tomatoes all in here and chilies. And same with the other greenhouse at the top. In fact, we can have a walk up to the other greenhouse now. So I'm going to cut the the, uh, the camera off here because it's very windy outside, and we'll meet up there in the the, the new greenhouse. Well, oh, guys, here we are in the front greenhouse. We've actually got potatoes coming up here. Uh, which ones are these? These are the kestrel. I've got kestrel coming up. I've got international kidney coming up. Um, what else? Nothing come the swift. Now these are first early as the swift. I don't understand why they ain't come up. But um, the Duke of York have all come up. There's a load of them there starting to come up here. Uh, all the peas, they're all doing well. Um, I'm a bit worried about this uh, green, this, this compost going green. If you look at it, you can actually see where it's all green. Now I've only watered these for three times in, um, since I put them in about a week or so ago and just look at them yeah, it's a bit, bit concerning that but the plants are going really well in it so what do you do? I mean what do you do? same on this one slightly green I don't know if it's something to do with the compost or what but they are coming up they see them all coming up all the way along so it can't be doing them any harm so there we go, there's 30 potato box pot, pots done, 20 in here, oh forgetting um, the, the bra beans, they need to go out as well, so they'll be going out shortly, I've got to sort the canes out for them in a bit, uh, as you saw me, um, I've got all the dailies and what have you in here now in that uh, coal frame outside, gives me a bit more room, but uh, yeah I've got another 20 buckets to to do, I might. I, I'm, I don't know whether I do 20 or what. I might. I know I can do another 10. Uh, I think I will do 20. So there's going to be 50 buckets. So uh, I'll 50 buckets um, to and lots and lots of spuds. That's the idea. Right, let's get back up to the. I don't even why I come down here. Really, we'll go back up to the uh, the other greenhouse now and have a natter. Well, guys. Here are my naughty chickens, they shouldn't be on the nest box, but they are, all but one. And the only reason why she's down there is because it looks like there's no room at all up here for them. Uh, or for her, I should say. Unbelievable. Uh, they, uh, they sit here for hours, just preening, preening themselves. They're Nova Browns, by the way. These, and they've all, as you can see, you look at the feet. They've all got little bands on. There's Jill. Hey, Jill. There's Kater. This one here, Gemma, and I don't even need to see her footprint. She's got a yellow, yellow um, band on her foot. All right, sit down. Yeah, it's pretty windy today. Yeah, there are my girls, up to no good. I was going to go in there and get some eggs out of the nest box, but obviously they're all on top of the bloody nest box, aren't they? So I can't get in there to get the eggs. I don't know, I'll have to do it later on, I suppose. And now moving on, let's go and have a look at this rhubarb. Oh, look at that. Rhubarb crumble tonight. I'm assure you I'll be taking a few pieces of that. I don't want to go this way because there's a little wren um, nesting inside the um, inside the compost bin or in the wormery of all bloody things for it to be nesting. This bed's all cleared. 
few footprints then in there from cats, no foxes last night. It's bloody cats who's been inside that, inside there walking about. We do have foxes doing the same thing. My shallots are doing okay here, they're starting to come up. I just stuck them straight into the ground. More garlic there, that's doing alright. These uh, greyhound cabbages are doing okay. Uh, more garlic, I just give these um, a watering of um, Epsom salts and same with these because the leaves have started to go yellow on the top. So anyhow, give them a give them a, um, a watering of that, and they, they look really good. They're all uh, taut and um, look a lot healthier than they did over there. This the, the collies, but if I get a collie out of there, I'll be lucky. There was I, I put them in the same time as I put the um, broccoli, which was in here. Now we had some fantastic broccoli off the, out of this bed, but these over there, nothing's happened yet. So about four weeks, we'll, four or five weeks, we'll get. Uh, hopefully, we'll get at least one collar. And all the potatoes are going in this book in this bed here. Um, already in this bed here. Now I do know that these have all started to to, to start to come up. It might not look it on the top, but I do. I can tell you down down below the root systems are all in place on these. There's 300 of them, and like I said, there's turbo, there's uh, Staten, uh, Stuttgart. In fact, there's a there's one there. What's come up now? That's a Centurion F1, and basically the there's I see them. You can see them there starting to come through. There's one there. There's another. I just shove them in the ground, me. I don't bother putting them in these um, these uh, trays, what everyone else seems to be using. My um, blueberry is doing okay, getting some leaves on the blueberry. I just put some um, pine needles around the base of that because they like it acidic, acidic um, the soil. And uh, yeah, the last year, fantastic crop of blueberries, I believe it or not. Trees are all starting to come into life now, these buds appearing all over them. Dahlia's down the middle of the orchard. Don't know, I keep calling these da um, daffodils. More daffodils around the edges of the beds. These are dwarf daffodils, I think they're called Tat the Tat. In the front, there's a load of tulips. More tulips here, red tulips, there's daffodils mixed in with more tulips and they go all the way around the beds, all the way around. All the um, current trees, the black, red and white currants have all started to throw buds out now. Same with these uh, um, gooseberries, they're doing alright. Rosemary in all these corners, I've done that, I've got to do it on this one yet. Again. All the buds are all starting to burst open now on the these gooseberries. Uh, there's a couple of um, what's we call it? Sir? They're uh, poppies. They're doing well. So everything's doing fine. Me strawberries are doing great as well. Um, this has been the first year of the strawberries. These was um, runners last year, and uh, well. I'm just going to throw some blood fish and bone over these. Now you you know about the potatoes. I've done several uh, buckets of potatoes. I'll explain more when we get back up to the video, up to the the middle shed. But inside there now are all my um, pot plants, like my dahlias and my um, Solomon seal, my lilies. And there's a few other plants in there as well. I'm going to be working on that bed there shortly. I'm going to be. I've not decided whether to put it and make it an herb bed or a flower bed. I don't know what to do yet. I'll be working on that in the next video. So uh, yeah, that's something to look forward to. There's the shed. So there we go. Right, let's get up to the up to the middle greenhouse and we can end the video as we always do. Well guys, you got the familiar tour, you also got to see me doing my spuds and um, well, got to uh, see the uh, 
the seedlings come and go at a pace and I can tell you now they really are coming at a pace they've got um, quite a lot of different things coming up now and then banana shallots are doing all right um, like I said, well, can't wait to get some of them I was watching Dan he's trying in fact everybody's trying them um, it's not just Dan Dan started it off like um, it's amazing how people who post videos up on um, YouTube um, everybody else seems to, to take note and then they all follow suit um, but we're, we're all like little lemons <laughs> but uh, hey if it works um, you, you give it a go don't you uh, let see if you can do better that's what it's all about trial and error yeah so um, like I say we've been pretty busy this week. I've had a lot, lot of, uh, lot of stuff to sort out. Um, I, I tell you what, I'm gonna post up um, a picture of. Um, I don't know if I can do it. I might be able to stick it in between in, in here in a second. In fact, right now, and I'll tell you a bit about it. So keep watching, guys. You see that? See the video suddenly appear here. Not a video, a picture. Right guys, so you, you saw the picture, oh I hope you saw the picture, that picture is um, a match winning weight, notice the goldfish, <laughs> yeah um, it's my second match that um, since the start of the season now, we had a break for five, I've not fished for about four or five months, I think it was October last year, the last time I went fishing, um, last week, not last week, the week before last, we fished a place called, uh, where was it? It was called Blake Hall Fisheries um, in Cheadle. Now I've not been for about four and a half, five months. And um, anyhow, I turned up and I managed to, I ended up fourth overall um, in the competition. So I was a bit disappointed really because it's not like me to not to, to not get in the top three. So I was really disappointed. Not being big headed or out, but I, I am a fairly good fisherman and I thought I would have thought, you know, I would have done better. And um, actually, I had the chance to win the match, but I blew it. So it's my own fault, really. Uh, but yeah, I finished fourth overall. So I thought, well, this one, what we're on, which was um, the last match, which was on um, a place called Border Fisheries, which was on Saturday the nineteenth. Which you're looking at the picture. You saw that picture there. Um, I turned up with the intent to to give it a good give it my best go as I could so it turns out I'm sat on the car park waiting for them all and they did the draw um, in the cafe so I gets a phone call um, where are you Mark I says I'm in the bloody car park waiting for you all where are you so we're in the cafe it's open now so no one told you so all these idiots there's about 40 odd of them are all, in the, all stuff in the faces and I'm thinking the cafe's closed so um Anyhow, to cut a long story short, they said, well, we've drawn your peg, and you've got peg 42. So I thought, 42, what's that, 42? I thought, oh, it's the wide. It's, going, it's like a canal what goes on. It's a canal, basically, a, a complete circle. Um, it goes right the way around on its seven, but it's about, it's about 12 metres. It goes from 11 metres to 12. It's normally, that's what it's like um, in... The width of the the canal, and there's this one particular part what goes out to about 40 meters. It's like a it's like a cutout in the bank, and I thought I I, I actually got that, but it wasn't. I was two two pegs further up. So anyhow, I got there, and my head dropped when I realised what I got. So I thought, well, I can't. I'm not that far away from um from from this particular where all the fish normally are. So. Anyhow, I used a bit of guile. Um, I baited up down the middle of the track, and I fished across. And I was, and while I was fishing across, I caught that goldfish. And I was, for about half an hour, three quarters, I was catching little rud like this. Now, some people only caught two fish like one. Some people, there's a lot of people who blanked, 
but they was catching fish like this, little little roach and um, rod and perch. Now I had already baited up down the track, so I, I come in down, I, I come in from the the far bank, and um, I was fishing down the track, and I started it in bream, didn't I? <laughs> and carp. You see the carp in the net, that's a nice, there's, there's about four and a half pound that carp. The bream are about a pound and a half. Anyhow, I think I weighed in around about, about 19, something like 19, 20 pound. Now, I've since found out, the last four matches on there has been won with 12 pound of fish. But in summer, get this one, in summer, you're talking 150 to 200 pound to win a match on the same water. And I've caught 200 pound of fish on this particular water, so it's showing you how bad it was. But I, yeah, I won the match with uh, I think it's about 19 pound. I think I won it with. Um, I, obviously, a bit of the it'd be posted up what what the way it was. But yeah. Um, so two matches back, I'm back to winning ways, uh, which is a good thing for me. And um, the next match is on the 18th or the 17th of. Um, April and that is on a place called Ampton Springs so I've got three weeks to recuperate now because um, actually nearly killed me the match but there you go um, so yeah I said I was going to post the result up so I'll sh hopefully this picture will suddenly pop up um, when it breaks um, talking but yeah um, so I've only got another thing, I've only got a couple more matches to go and you never know, we may even win the pairs because this is the pairs. I don't even know who my pair partner is at the moment. That's how sad it is. But um, let's hope he's uh, he's done as good as at least he's added a few points to earn the tally. Or in this case, he's not accumulated a load of points. There's where it all where it all goes to cut. If someone is finishing last at all in all the matches and you're winning them all you can you, you you're not going to win simple as that you need someone to at least catch, get a few few lower scores i mean i've got a number i've got a four points and a one point so there's five points out of a possible probably 100 points so whoever gets the whoever's my partner if he can get somewhere around about 10 15 points we've got a good chance of winning the the trophy this year for the purse and i'm already through to the um the i think it's the all winners so that's a that's a that's a, a relief like me um, getting through to the all winners so so quickly um like if you win a, win a match, you automatically go into the the competition for the all winners. So I'm already there. Um, so there we go. Anyhow, that was that was what I was. That's what I'm gonna be doing um, in the, over the next um, four or five months. Um, so the videos you might see a video of me suddenly pop up with, a, with some fish or something daft like that. So don't be too alarmed. I'm still doing my allotment videos. Get this down in it. So right, so anyway, I'm going to wrap it all up now. I'm going to disappear. I've got things to do, people to survive. <laughs> so I'll see you later, folks. Bye for now.